and I got a couple got a couple of choices that I got to make. I went to go look for Ark in the city and then I well I guess Shiki realized, hey, this is a dumb idea. I'm going home. And then he did. So it's night of that evening. Stop and talk. My body's exhausted. But I can't fall into a deep sleep. The wounds all around my body sing and wake up my mind as it tries to sleep. I look at the clock as I lie in bed. It's past three in the morning, already five hours of unsatisfactory rest. Damn it, I can't sleep. I'm not being able to sleep when I want to. It's like torture. Tick, tick, tick. The sound of the clock second hand gets on my nerves. Great tick 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 wait what? I think I heard something mixed in with the ticking. It sounded like the door opening, but who would be coming in at this hour? Tap tap tap. No, there's no mistake. Someone came into the room and is coming near me. Who is it? If someone was to come this late at night, would it be Maybe it's Seal Senpai? I don't think so. Not only will she have to break into your house, but yeah. Maybe it's Akiha. Maybe it's Arkuid. Arkuid. Arkuid? Maybe it's a vampire. Hmm. Maybe it's Akiha. If someone is coming to my room, it either has to be Kohaku-san, Hisui, or Akia. Hisui and Kohaku-san would probably knock, so that leaves only Akia. Akia? I sit up in my bed and call out. The moonlight only dimly illuminates the room, so I can hardly see. I look around, but I don't see anyone's silhouette. God, he's like he's a Metal Gear guard. Must be in my imagination. My mind must be a little dull from the lack of sleep. I let out a breath and I roll over to my left side. The light on my nightstand comes on. Eh? My heart skips a beat. That's strange. I don't remember turning that on. I turn off the light. I have a school tomorrow. I need to get some sleep. That won't do, Nissan. We'll need the lights on for this. Suddenly, from behind me, a calm voice calls out. <gasps> I turn around. There I see... Akia. And Kohaku-san. Akia? What are you doing here at this hour? Why is Kohaku-san with you? Did something happen? I slip out of bed as I speak. After exchanging glances, they laugh. Jeez, shiggy san you're too out of it. I guess I'm an Ari here because there is something. Kaku-san giggles. Huh? I don't understand what's so funny. Kohaku, laughing like that is rude to Nissan. I understand how you feel, but you shouldn't surprise him too much. We have to save the fun for later, right? What? Oh, forgive me, Akiya-sama. He's just so cute when he doesn't understand simple things like this, so I couldn't help it. That's true. Certainly, Nissan is a bit dense. I mean, not even realizing why the two of us would come here this late at night, not even knowing his own position. Yes, he's just like an innocent little puppy. Cute, but clueless. Uh... With a cold smile, Akia looks my way. Aki... Uh... Seeing her eyes finally makes me understand that there's something wrong with the way they are acting. How should I say it? I don't sense any hostility, but it feels like they're up to something. Are you trying to trick me again? Akia, if you have something to say, I'll listen, so can you just go ahead? We have school tomorrow, so we should be in so we should go to bed early. I tell her this as coolly as I can. She stares at me without saying a word. She's not happy with something. No, more than that. Akiya sighs. I thought Nissan would be a little more flustered, but I'm a bit shocked that he's not getting in the mood. 
She's talking as if I'm not even here. Huh? Um, Akia. I still don't know what you're trying to say, but... Jeez, Nissan. Just what, what kind of upbringing did you have in the Arima household? Look, someone of the opposite sex is in your room at night. A gentleman of your age should be excited just by that, but you're acting like normal. It's just natural for a woman like me to be shocked by that. She glares at me. Wait a minute, Akia. I would notice if girls were in my room, but you guys are different. We're brother and sister, so this isn't a big deal, and Karakusan comes to check around every night. Yeah, that's why this isn't surprising. Akia is my little sister, and Karakusan is a servant. It isn't a big deal for them to come here, day or night, so I really don't... In other words, Nissan, you see us more as family than you do as woman. I see. It might be good for you if that was really true. She looks me over again with that strange smile. That quiet look that seems to look into my mind. Uh... Oh, my heartbeat starts to quicken. There's something... odd. Being looked at like that by Akia, I start to feel more and more uneasy. For example, like my true feelings of not being able to accept Akia as my sister... Yet, Akia as my sister yet, since, she, since she's changed so much since I last saw her. Like my true feelings of me starting to feel more for Hisui and Karakusan than I should to... than I should to just servants. It's like she's staring into my hidden feelings, and I feel guilty. Oh? What's wrong, Nissan? Suddenly looking away like that, you look like you're hiding something. What? I realize my cheeks are getting red. Of course not! Just tell me what you want. If we don't get some sleep soon, tomorrow will be difficult. Not to be defeated, I match her stare. And then, for some reason, Akia gives a bored sigh. How disappointing. I was looking forward to seeing your confused face, Nissan. But this is boring. Well, we'll watch you be embarrassed further, so I guess it will be okay. Huh? I climb out of bed. Wait a minute. I think she just said something terrible. Akia, what are... Oh? Is it okay for you to stand up with your body? You have anemia, so you should be calm during the night. You seem to be lacking sleep even now. You were tired for the past few days, right? Please pay more attention to your health, Nissan. Your body is very weak. So when you collapse if you keep pushing yourself like this? What? Her words seem to affect me. What are you saying? I'm fine. Oh? Funny, you're looking a little strange to me. As if, yes, your breathing is going to get wilder, your blood will feel sluggish in your veins, and see, your hands and feet are going to start feeling cold. Hey, stop it. If you say that, I really will feel dizzy. No, it isn't just your imagination. Your eye was strange from when we came in, but you just never realized it, Nissan. See? Kohaku was laughing earlier because you didn't even notice it yourself. You're so weak that you might collapse at any time, but you don't ever think of your own condition, Nissan. You're like a scarecrow, you being the only one not noticing that. Wearing old clothes, bamboo for arms and legs. For far away he looks human, but once you look close, it's just something made up to take human form. What? Why did she suddenly start talking about all this nonsense? Really, you still don't understand? Your face is pale and your mind is numb. You really are like a scarecrow that you don't even want to admit that. Don't you think so too, Kohaku? That Nissan is like an ornament that could break at any time? That can't be true. It can't, but what? why am I feeling really dizzy? See, you're already at your limit. Stop pushing yourself and lie down. But you will stay awake. You won't be able to move your arms and legs, but you will still be conscious. Stop! My body collapses. I'm falling, I'm falling towards the bed, just like Akiya said. No. My body isn't strange. 
Because I didn't have any symptoms of anemia earlier. I told you, it does not matter. Your body is always under constraint. So, you have no control tonight, either. Because... You've always been my puppet, Nissan. What? I fall onto the bed. I worry about streaming this. In the end, Akio was right. Just like whenever I have an anemic spell, I lose consciousness. Huh? No. This time it's different. My entire body is numb, but I'm still conscious. I can't really concentrate, but I'm awake. Different than my usual anemia. I stare blankly at the ceiling. Akiya-sama? Um, did we overdo it? Looks like he really has anemia. Kohaku-san's voice. What are you talking about, Kohaku? You're the one who put some drugs into his dinner, so he will be a little dazed. I only wanted him to sleep a bit. I could have done that myself. Akiya sounds dissatisfied. I hate you two. I call out to them, still lying down. My arms and legs won't work, but somehow uh, I managed to turn my neck and look at both of them. Shiki-san is very pure, so I guess suggestions seems to work easily on him. I suppose that's a good trait about him, too. Seems they're ignoring me. Yes, but Kohaku, when they are too pure, don't they make you want to dominate them? She looks over at me. As soon as our eyes meet, I feel a chill around my spine. Cold sinks into my skin, burning under my flesh into my very core. I feel as if my brain is becoming numb. My body feels tied up as she looks at me with those eyes. As if time has stopped and the whole area has frozen up. Ah, uh, Akia? She doesn't say a word. My heart beats loudly. Her face is entirely devoid of expression, but her eyes... Her eyes glow like a predator stalking her prey. Domination, huh? Well, I like seeing his troubled face as much as his happy face, so I understand what you mean, Akia-sama. Next to Akia, Kohaku tilts her head. Akia doesn't look at Kohaku-san, but she gives a small nod. Let's see... It's like a painting. Hey, Kohaku, let's say there's a painting that is well done, but not magnificent. Because it's well done, you don't have any complaints, but you can't like it because it's just well done and doesn't have anything interesting about it. In that case, do you know how to make it special for you, Kohaku? Um, let's see. I don't know, Akiya-sama. It's simple. You just have to paint over the painting and make it worthless. As a result, that good painting will turn into trash. But the process, breaking what is good for you, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it beautiful just thinking about it? I feel love and regret for that painting. The pain as the painting gets ruined, anger at myself for ruining it. Frustration that because it's beyond repair, and more than anything else, the fact that I am only am the only one who can break it who can break it is absolute. I think it is the happiness of owning it. Because it is the only one, and because the wounds on it are put on there by me, I feel more attached to it. Because the more marks you put on it, the more it becomes yours. Without any emotion, like a machine, Akia laughs. Hey, Kohaku, don't you want to break that? I think it will be enjoyable. But, hey, Akia! I shout. But Akia doesn't respond, and Kohaku san with her smile. Yes, I understand, Akia sama. Response like that. Urgh. I rally all of the strength in my body. I strain as hard as I can and order my lifeless limbs to stand. Urgh. I strain. I gradually feel my ability to move my arms and legs starting to return. That's enough, don't do that, Shiki-san. You're anemic, so you shouldn't strain your body too much. With her usual smile, Kohaku-san crouches beside the bed. Kohaku-san, what are... whoops. What does it look like? 
I'm tying you down so you won't struggle. It's okay, I only tie your wrists and ankles, so it won't hurt that much. Tie? What do you think? Ah! I clenched my jaw at the sudden pain. As if she had a lot of practice, Kohaku-san expertly binds my hands and feet to the bed. <laughs> I feel a tinge in the back of my head. I don't know what these two are thinking, but being ha bound hand and foot in my bed, just imagining what I look like makes me go crazy. Having them see me like that, I'm so embarrassed I want to die. Kohaku-san, please stop fooling around! Oh, Shiki-san, you're blushing! To scream so much, it must be your first time being tied down. Of course it is! Look, just untie me! Hi, Kisama. Shiki-san is saying all of these things. He doesn't seem to realize his position, so it's another right to treat him more roughly. That Kohaku-san... Still smiling, she gazes down at me, tied down. Her look is far more frightening than Akiya's sharp gaze. Is it like the cruelty of young kids? Kakusan seems to be enjoying this far more than Akiya. But then, something like a smile flashes across Akiya's face. This won't do, Kohaku. If Nissan wanted you himself, you could do whatever you want. But this time is different, isn't it? For tonight, the ownership of him belongs to me. Your duty is just to serve him. I understand. Excuse me, Shiki-san. So saying, Kohaku begins to take off my clothes. <laughs> Excuse me, what the fuck? Morning? I dizzily open my eyes. Sunshine pours in from the window, enveloping the room with a warm atmosphere. Uh, uh, uh. I stare down at my hands. They're a little sweaty. My body is drenched in sweat as well, as if last night was incredibly hot. What's more, I'm panting heavily. Huh? I shake both my hands. I can move. There isn't any mark left on my wrist from the ropes. The bed is clean, and neither Akiya nor Kohaku-san are anywhere to be seen. Huh? Akiya and Kohaku-san? Uh, Akiya? I jump out of bed. I wildly look around the room. I see... there's no one. Right. No one's here. The bed doesn't look rumpled, and that cold Akiya isn't there either. A uh, dream? As soon as I realize it, I heave a sigh of relief. I shut my eyes and catch my breath. This is my room. It is before 7 in the morning. I am the only one here. And of course, Kohaku-san and Akiha are nowhere to be seen. Ha. Ha. Yeah, I knew. I know it was a dream. Now that I'm calm, I know she wouldn't ever do anything like that. In that instance, what happened with last night was not real. Ha! Ha. I let out a deep breath. All the same, I definitely still remember what happened last night. I know it was a dream, but it felt too real. It makes me think it was real. But it was without a doubt a dream. That has to be true. Why? Why did I see that dream? Well, certainly Akiya is strict, and she is the head of the Tono household, so it makes her the most powerful person here. But she wouldn't do that. She's my dear sister. Seeing that dream... D does that mean I'm seeing her as a woman? Uh... I remember her cold stare, like ice. I hug myself to make sure this is real. Damn, what the hell am I thinking? Lusting after my sister? There really is something wrong. Well, she's different after eight years. Like a completely different person. She seems more like a refined young lady that I've, that I've never met. But still. But she was really cute. I blush furiously as I remember. I know it truly is forbidden, but I recall the dream and just sit there thinking about it. 
And then... Shikisama. Ah! I flail around off my pet as if trying to escape. No, in fact I was trying to escape, but it just ended up with me landing on the floor with the sheets. <laughs> Sui! Uh, how long have you been there? This is before you awoke, Shikisama. He's not very... situationally aware, is he? She speaks with her usual lack of expression. Still lying on the floor, tangled in the sheets and unable to stand, I look up at Hisui's face. Before I woke up, then that means Hisui saw my face when I was having that dream? My face turns deep red. Hisui just stands there, expressionless as usual, and makes no attempt to speak. Um, did I look strange? I do not wish to describe it. Ah, I knew it. I must have looked really weird. But if you insist, Shikisama, I can describe it as accurately as I can. No, you you don't have to do that. My face still flushed, I speak in a fading voice. Um, sweet san <coughs> Adding san to it is a clear sign of my vulnerability. What is it, Shikisama? Um, I'm going to change, so would you mind waiting outside? Or rather, I'm just so embarrassed I want her to leave. But history doesn't obey today of all days. Once I can confirm you are awake, I will leave the room, Shikisama. Eh, huh? huh? Is she joking? Why does she think I'm covering myself up in these sheets? It's to hide something that's still standing. I'm fine, so please leave. I can get up and I won't go back to sleep. I'll change to go to the sitting room as soon as you leave. Shikisama, are you hurt and unable to stand? Hisui approaches me out of worry. No, that's not it. I'm sta- I- I mean I can stand, so don't worry about it. I can erect myself. I crawl, pulling my sheets like a slug and gain some distance from her. Using the bed as a barrier, I get far enough away. Then please excuse me. I'll prepare your breakfast, so please come after you change. She's got to be suspicious, but she bows and leaves the room. <sighs> I was so surprised. The contents of my dream were surprising enough, but knowing Hisui saw me while I was dreaming... Well, it's very troubling. Or is it my own fault for having that kind of dream about Akia? Well, I guess it is my fault. Having a dream like that about my own sister. I give a sigh of self-loathing. For my sake, for Akia's reputation, I, I should just forget about it as soon as possible. After calming down enough, I head to the sitting room. As usual, Akia is sitting on the sofa, elegantly sipping tea. Oh? Good morning, Nissan. You're up early today. She must be happy I woke up because she greets me with a smile. Yeah, good morning. There were, well, a lot of things going on this morning. As soon as I say that, I remember that cold stare from last night. Ah, uh, this isn't good. I can tell my face is blushing beyond my control. My selfie made a complete fool. And Akia, who was always watching, Nissan? A brief clamor. What's wrong? Your face is red. Do you have a fever? Uh, rushing over to me, she looks up at me from below. But if she looks at me that seriously, I... Akia sighs. You do seem to have a fever. Kohaku, come quickly. Nissan doesn't seem to be well. Akia calls out to the dining room. kohaku san has to be preparing my breakfast in the kitchen. I'm fine. It's just a minor cold, so don't worry. I stand out in the rain. If it is a cold, then I can't let it go by. For you, a trivial illness is a big deal. The strength of your immune system is much lower than most people's. Akio seems to be fed up and puts her hand on my forehead. The sensation of her cool, delicate hand. White, slender fingers. So different from those of a man who goo. Delicate, beautiful, white fingers. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. I break loose and run out to the lobby. 
footsteps echo as I off. Shigisama, have you finished your breakfast already? No, that's not it, but um, where's, where's my bag? I have your bag here. Are you already going to school? Nodding, I snatched my bait from Hisui. Peace. I'm going. Don't worry about seeing me off. Nissan, you've been acting strange. What are you doing with that what are you doing with that fever? Jeez, I told you it's nothing. If this is nothing, I'm going to school. I'll have breakfast later, so leave me alone. Leave you alone? Hey, Nissan. The sound of my fleeing footsteps is my only response. <sighs> Even if it is Akia, she wouldn't chase me this far. Since we're not kids anymore, she won't stop me from going to school. Whew. I take a deep breath and I'm finally able to calm down. What am I running away for? Once I calm down, I can think clearly. I didn't do anything wrong, so there was no need for me to run away like that. I don't believe it. I look like a complete idiot. But to go back to the mansion deep breakfast sounds more dumb. To school then. Letting out a sigh, I go downhill along the residential street. I arrive 30 minutes earlier than usual. The figures of students around the school gates are sparse. It seems I'm the only one who's arrived at this odd time. On the school grounds, the athletic clubs are holding their practices. I'm not in any clubs right now, but Truthfully, I like to move around a lot. You should join the basketball club, Polish Balls. I know that I have some athletic ability, at least enough to be proud of, but I can't join any clubs. My body always has this recurring anemia, so I would just be a bother. My doctor has told me that I shouldn't exercise frequently. Since middle school, I've been asked more than a few times to join a club, but I always have to say it's not my thing and refuse. Every time I refused, I felt a sense of separation. That might have been a subconscious wall that told me I'll never be able to mix in with the people on the other side. <sighs> ah, that's enough. This really isn't my thing. I'll stop thinking such thoughts and hurry on to the classroom. Huh? I thought I was the first one, but it seems like some of my classmates are already here. Yeah, you're early, Tono. Morning. This class seems to have a lot of people with spare time. Nah, our practice, our practice just got over with. Those that come here this early uh, who aren't in clubs are usually only those with daily duties. I see. That does make sense now that you mention it. Green those around me, I take my seat. It's half an hour before homeroom. It's not a bad idea to just watch my classmates arrive. The classroom starts to get busy around 7.50. Huh? I think I saw Senpai in the hallway. I noticed Senpai! She's down at the first year hallway again. What's she doing? Maybe she came to see me? Well then, I'll go into the hallway to talk to her. Ah, uh, probably doesn't concern me, so I'll just watch from here. An opening! I'll surprise her from behind! This couldn't possibly go wrong. Senpai is glancing all around the hallway. I don't know if she's looking for something or someone, but she looks really suspicious. <laughs> I get this sudden, irresistible urge. Senpai's always taking everything at her own pace. I think I could respond sometimes to balance things out. Senpai is seriously searching for something. I sneak up behind her. Luckily, Senpai doesn't sense me at all. Here goes. Boo! I grab her from behind, but before I know it, I'm lying on the ground. Uh, oh, Tono, good. Senpai sounds worried. Yeah, it's me, Senpai. Jeez, don't surprise me like that. I reflexively got away, but uh, are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. I, I just tripped. I stand up. Guess the strange looks from all the other students in the hallway are to be expected. Ow. Man, I think I hit my hip. I landed on my keys. Guess I shouldn't pull pranks like that. Regret. Exactly. I think I overdid it, but since it was your fault, I will not apologize. Uh, I know, I know. Sorry, Senpai, I, I interrupted your search. 
Well, this mischievous boy will now go back to its classroom. Gripping my butt, I start to head to class. Oh, wait, Tonokun. Can you stand there as a punishment? Huh? Stand here as a punishment? As usual, she says something strange. Sure. What is it? Just don't move, please. Like yesterday, she starts sniffing me again. Um, senpai? Tonokun, did you sleep well last night? Heh. <laughs> she looks directly into my eyes as she asks. Sleep well? Oh, that goes without saying. I couldn't get to sleep easily last night, and also... Uh, I blush as the memories resurface. With a piercing gaze, Senpai looks up at me. Senpai, um... Oh no, Kuni, you pervert! Huh? With a look indicating she wants to say more, Spike quickly walks away. Huh? At lunch break, that guy who didn't even show up for a single class arrives. Yo, Tono! Food! Let's get some food! He's happy about something, being even more energetic than usual. Of course, food. But you seem to be in a great mood. Did something happen, Arihiko? Yep. I just asked Senpai if she wanted to eat lunch together, and she refused. Huh. That's odd. Senpai must be re referring to a steel senpai, but this guy seems to get happy when his offer is refused. Hey, Arihiko, do you have that sort of taste? No, no, I'm not finished. So I asked Senpai why not, and she said, if Tonokun is there, then I don't want to come. <laughs> Isn't that great, Tono? Um, that's odd. Why have I been friends with this guy since middle school? Oh man, she really hates you, Tono. Her rival's loss is my gain, so I'll treat you to lunch today. Arihiko happily slaps my back. I see. Senpai's still mad, mad at me about this morning. I have no idea why she's angry at me, but she's definitely angry. Hey, let's go, Tono. There's only seats enough for half the people using the cafeteria. Arihiko takes me by the arm and drags me off. I sit next to Arihiko and eat my lunch. It's been 40 minutes and nothing has happened. My school's cafeteria has a television and, for better or for worse, uh, for our education, they play back the morning news as they recorded this morning. At any rate, the news they're playing back is talking about a drunk customer stabbing to death a convenience store employee. Something that makes me, uh, not want to go to a convenience store for a few days. What a dangerous world we live in. Indiscriminate serial killers, drunken people stabbing people. Man can't even feel safe playing around at night anymore. Arhiko seems like he's seriously watching the news. Well, certainly it is dangerous. But at least those serial killings won't happen anymore, so things should be, like, usual. Oh, really? Did they catch the serial killer? No, they haven't caught him. But Nero is no longer in this world. So the stupid title of modern day vampire killing shouldn't be showing up in the news anymore. And there will be no more of those meaningless killings. Anyway, those terrible incidents won't happen anymore. There won't be any more victims and the streets will be back to normal. No, I think there will actually be another victim, Tono. What? How can you be so sure, Arihiko? Well, look for yourself. And the news said they found the 10th dead body. Huh? Oh. Really? That's right behind the movie theater I always go to. Hey, hey wait. I push Arhiko and look at the TV. What I see is, without a doubt, the news reporting that the 10th victim of the serial killings was found last night. That can't be. The heat narrow is dead. So why, why is there another dead body with most of its blood drained? Hmm, this modern vampire guy. I don't know anything about the person, but if it's like a sexy chick, maybe I wouldn't mind getting my blood sucked. Um... If it's like a sexy chick, he wouldn't mind getting his blood sucked? His stupid talk... Might be right. No way. I don't want to think about it, but even with Nero gone, there's still one more vampire left. 
classes end and school is over. Actually, it's more like at some point school was over. Wrapped up in my bad thoughts, I look up and suddenly find myself alone. Serial killings are still happening. I don't know what that means. The only one who knows the answer is probably Arkwood. I don't know. I'm not involved in any of these incidents anymore. Once I settled things with Nero, I came back to the ordinary world. Then I can only be insane I can only be insane to want to go back to the abnormal world once again. I shouldn't be involved. I understand, even if I don't say it. It's probably my second most correct choice. But a long, long time ago, someone taught me the most correct choice. Listen, Shiggy. Every person's life is filled with pitfalls. You have more power to do something about it than most people, so you've got to get it together. <sighs> so I just can't pretend I didn't see it. The incident, this incident, isn't over yet. It seems once I got involved in this incident, I have to see this out to the very end. I leave school. First, let's go to Arkwood's place. Transitions! Her room is still the same, but Arkwood isn't there. Well, I didn't think I'd find her this easy. Looks like I have to go out to the city and look for her. The sun sinks and the city is really starting to get dark. I looked around the major places in the city, but I didn't even catch a glimpse of her. Damn it. She was around when it didn't matter, so why can't I find her when I do need her? What should I do? The night's just beginning, so... Maybe we'll stumble across her. Uh, or go back to the mansion. In the meantime, better will take a sippy. Well, Hisui and Kohaku and everyone are kind of worried. Or have been worried. But I don't know. I do want to find Ark. I also do want to have something fucking happen. The night has just begun. No, to be more exact, if Arkwood would be walking around, it would most likely be during the night rather than during the day. I guess it would be more efficient to search around town. I don't want to think about it, but most of the victim victims are usually found in alleys. If I want to find Arkwood, if I want to find the vampire killer who's continuing to murder, I have to stick to searching the streets. Damn it. What am I doing? Not understanding my own feelings, I curse and start to run around aimlessly. <sighs> I sit down on the guardrail. It's been several hours already. I looked around aimlessly and I didn't even catch a single glimpse of Arkwood. Damn it. It's so frustrating. Of course, I knew it. I knew it isn't easy to just randomly find someone in town, but I still felt optimistic that I would find her. Where did she go? Why? I just wanted to ask her about the serial killings, but once I find out I can't see her, I... Stop. Stop. I should just stop. I stand up from the guardrail and start walking. It'll be midnight soon. Search for Arkwood and any longer really is just useless. <sighs> But if I've gone this far, I can do just a little more. There's one last place I need to check. If she's not there, then I'll go back to the mansion. The Deserted Park. I arrive at the place where I cooperated with Arkwade and defeated Nero. Have we only looked in town? I've yet to search here. Well, not that I'll find anything. Growing to myself, I entered the park. Midnight. As expected, there's no one here this late at night. With this much silence, it feels rather refreshing. 
That's right. It's not like I can conveniently find her. <sighs> I breathe out a sigh and slump my shoulders. I'm stupid. Why well, am I so disappointed? I don't understand it myself. Just once more, I think maybe, maybe I want to see her smile. Ah, there you are. Good evening, Shiki. Yeah, just like this. Her face that's so cheerful and carefree, you, you can't believe her blocks of a vampire. Hey, uh, Arquit! Without even thinking, I grab both of her shoulders. Eh? Arquit flinches in surprise. Her shoulders are indeed real, and I quickly pull my arms back. Y why? Even though I'm the one that's been searching for so long, even though the one I've been searching for so long is right there before me, I can't do anything but stumble over my words. Why? That's odd. I was looking for you, so I don't think it's a coincidence we met here. It, you were looking for me? Why? Why? Oh, no reason. She says straight out that she has no reason to be looking for me. Uh, I forgot. She really is kind of like a cat this way. Well, I guess it works out. To be honest, I wanted to see you too. So, meeting here, um... I was about to say it makes me really happy, but I, I frantically choke those words off. Anyway, I, I want to have a serious talk. I want to talk about it somewhere else since I, I feel uneasy here, so is that, is that okay? Sure, but talk about what? You'll see. Let's go more to the back of the park. Tell her to come on, I start walking. Tilting her head in curiosity, she follows me obediently. What do you want to talk about, Shiki? About vampires. You said it before, that the recent serial killings were the work of a vampire. Arkawade nods. Then, do you know... The, do you know the morning news said another victim was found? She was killed last night and drained of blood. Hmm. Arkawade's eyes narrow. Something... something like a freezing tension races down my spine. Oh, and, and you. I swallow hard. She stares right at me. Almost a stare which says she will attack me immediately if I move even the slightest bit. It isn't it strange, Sharkwit? Nero is dead. So why are these incidents still happening? Don't tell me that you. That's not it at all. That's not me, but another vampire. Arkwood responds immediately, loosening the tension. But I'm not satisfied. What do you mean? The work of another vampire? So they just keep coming? Of course not. The serial killings were always the work of just one vampire from the very beginning. So no new vampires will come, and Nero was unrelated to those incidents. Huh? Nero was unrelated? What do you mean? It's just like I said. You're normally pretty sharp, but you're lost at some points. Think back, Shiki. Nero was a vampire, but did he ever suck human blood? Suck blood? He ate humans and... Oh. I see. Why didn't I notice such a simple mistake? The victims of the serial killings are found with their, with their bodies drained of blood. But Nero was different. He didn't leave any dead bodies behind. He only drank the blood, but also ate the meat, leaving no trace. To prove it, the, the people eaten by him in the hotel were treated as missing people, not killed people. So that means it is something completely different. Wait, then what is this? What is the serial killings going on right now? Just who's doing it? That's a different vampire than Nero. To be more, to be more specific, that vampire is why I came here and Nero came here following me. It's that sort of correlation. Huh. So the one you're after wasn't Nero after all? Yes, I didn't ever say he was my initial target. I was his target, but he was never my target. My target is the one called the serial killer in this city. Shiki, I don't quite believe it, but don't tell me you made such a simple mistake. What? I, I gasp in shock. But it really is, just as she says. 
She said her purpose is to kill vampires, so I, I just thought it was Nero she was after. So what is it? Killing Nero that night was pointless? It wasn't pointless. You fought in my place. Well, if you didn't kill me, you probably wouldn't have had to in the first place. I feel a little dizzy. In other words, those vampire killings had nothing at all to do with Nero, and it was the work of another vampire? Yes, that's right. But that's my problem, so you don't have to worry about it. But more than that, hey... With an extremely happy smile, Arkwood looks up at me and... As I still stand there in surprise. How was last night? Who came? I'd die before I say it. Arkwood, it doesn't concern you, so leave me alone. I look away from her and refuse. But Arkwood keeps saying, Come on, come on, over and over. Come on, tell me. You can at least tell me who you dreamed about. She asks like a curious kid. Every time I turn away, she keeps jumping in front of me, saying, Come on, come on! Please, just let it go. There's something wrong with that dream. Even now that... I don't know why I saw that dream. Arkwood says it's my greatest desire, but I don't want to think that's what it was. I thought it was just the most logical choice of who would appear in its room. Oh, maybe it turned into a nightmare. She does seem to write the story to her liking when fond of her target. She's only a novice, so I guess it couldn't be helped. Arkwood mumbles to herself. Huh? Writes the story to her liking? What do you mean? I'm saying she interprets your desire in her own way. That dream familiar I sent you is just a child, so she likes to play pranks. I see. Well, that's a relief. That's right, that dream, it couldn't have been what I wanted. I let out a sigh of relief. With this, my innocence has been proven, but... Arkwid, why did you send me such a thing? That's too much, even for harassment. Hmm. I wouldn't harass you. I sent you the dream familiar to thank you for defeating Nero. I really am grateful to you, so I thought it'd be great if I made you happy. Thank me? Well, well I'm happy or grateful, but... But no matter what, I'll, I'll pass on that sort of thanks. Oh, come on. Are you saying you can't accept a person's goodwill? Hey, you're not a person, you're a vampire, Arkwid. That's true, but... Arkwid slumps her shoulders. How do I say this? Ar Ark is very open in expressing her, expressing her emotions. Being happy, being angry, she changes her expression so quickly, it, it's actually kind of charming. I said she was a vampire, but she really does seem like a human. You have to make me forget that fact. In the first place, why did you send me that dream familiar thing? She told you already. Are you still angry at me for killing you? That's not it at all. I sent it as thanks for defeating Nero. I really am grateful to you. I thought you'd be extremely happy. We've been over this. As thanks? I'll pass on that kind of thanks. And that kind of poor taste. Just what are vampires thinking? I slump my shoulders. I don't know what she's mad about, but she looks at me with a dissatisfied expression. What's that all about? What's that all about, you meanie? I know I'm not human. She turns away, then starts walking off. Uh? 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 Hello? Game? Oh! Not responding! Ah, oh, fuck. Quality programming. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck.